Δεν τη ξενόχτω. Δεν τη ξενόχτω. Δεν τη ξενόχτω. Δεν τη ξενόχτω. Δεν For the better part of a century, the Soviets ruled the people of the Caucasus with an iron fist. Ancient blood feuds were suppressed. The Soviets believed in divide and conquer. Nations were checkerboarded within each other. Nagorno, or mountainous Karabakh, an ancient enclave of Christian Armenians, was placed within Azerbaijan, a Muslim state. A formidable region known for its natural beauty it was a terrain as stubborn as its offspring. As the Soviet Union fractured, small republics scrambled for freedom. Mountainous Gharapakh declared itself independent of Azerbaijan. In response, Azeri mobs fed by agitators attacked the Armenians living within their cities. Soon after, a devastating earthquake hit Armenia itself. By now, Armenians had lost patience for Soviet control. What began as partisan skirmishes soon erupted into full-scale war. Azerbaijan had oil, and in the beginning, Russian support. It boosted its military with foreign mercenaries. Gharapag lost much of its territory by 1992. The capital, Stepanakert, was bombed mercilessly. By 1993, the Russians stopped supporting Azerbaijan, who was shifting away from their sphere of influence. Undaunted, Azerbaijan launched a final offensive. The farmers they had once faced, however, were now a hardened militia. The offensive was met with stiff resistance, and the tables were finally turned. After months of fighting, Azerbaijan lost control of the situation. Armenian forces pushed into Azerbaijan itself in a gambit to secure a buffer zone. Tens of thousands on both sides were dead, and over a million more were refugees. The situation to the north, however, was the most difficult. Armenian partisans faced off against a superior Azeri force that still occupied their village of Kulistan. Here, in these dark forests in the mountains, was their theater of perpetual war. The village of Maravuz was headquarters to the units stationed along the Gulistan front. It also served as an artillery support to the Armenian forces further south. The slightest rain would turn its unpaved roads into streams of mud. The battle at nearby Mirbashir was endemic of the shifting fortunes of war. The Armenians of Garapag were now taking the conflict into Azerbaijan in a gambit to secure defensive positions surrounded by a buffer zone. In February uh, of 1988, there were some selected pogroms or massacres against Armenians that were living in Sumgait.
there were additional pogroms against Armenians in Baku, the capital city of Azerbaijan. Out of this population of maybe about 400,000 Armenians who for a long time had been residing in Azerbaijan, about 350,000 fled. Armenia got involved in this conflict uh, because uh, it wanted to prevent the uh, genocidal deportation and destruction of the Armenians of Nagorno-Karabakh. Uh, that was a danger they saw, and Armenia simply uh, couldn't sit by with folded hands and allow that to happen. The thrust into Mirbashir was producing heavy casualties on the Armenian side. Hospitals in this region were already stretched to the limit. The wounded would have to be flown back to Stepanakert, Karapal's capital, where they could receive the best care. Incoming supplies would be stored at headquarters and distributed to the units that needed them the most. Medicine was always scarce. Emergency operations would often be performed without anesthetic. Maravuz in 94 was a village of empty houses. Just a year before, in 1993, it had been contested ground between Azeri and Armenian forces. Among the fighters on the Armenian side were the White Bears, a group of fighters organized and equipped by Garo Kakedjian, a volunteer from the United States. Kakedjian was the grandson of genocide survivors. His unit drew volunteers from all over, taking on the most difficult missions. Garo had fallen here, on one of the hilltops overlooking Maravuz. The depiction of the coming skirmish left out one detail, the mercenary snipers that would be tracking his final movements. Part of the reason that the Russians supplied armaments, but also then troops for maintaining borders was because they had a self-interest in utilizing Armenians as a buffer nation. Well, Russia, of course, uh, does want peace in the region, but on its own terms. Uh, uh, Russia wants a peace that serves Russian national interests. Oil of the Caspian needs to be exported some way it can't be flown out, it's got to be pumped out through uh, pipelines. And here the U.S. Uh, would like to see a peace which would result in, uh, in um, Azerbaijani oil being pumped out to the west uh, through Turkey uh, to a port called uh, Jehan, which is uh, on the Mediterranean Sea. The best way to pump out that oil uh, would be through Armenia. Russia, of course, would prefer to see the pipeline uh, go through uh, Russia, through the area of uh, Chechnya, so that Russia would then be able to get the transit revenues and also to, to uh, promote its dominance, to maintain its dominance in the region, because the country through which the oil flows would have the option of uh, turning off the spigot. The ability to turn off the spigot uh, gives you enormous uh, power. Thank 
Julistan sits in the valley below Mara, the tallest peak of Nagorno-Karabakh. In 1994, the Armenian side had three main camps directly opposing Julistan. The closest one in was Yeragir, followed by Gyoktapa. Further to the west, surrounded by high ridges, was the field hospital nestled against a peak called Ardatap. Ardatap would be supplied by helicopter when possible. But when bad weather persisted, supplies would have to be driven up to Yeragir by armored personnel carriers and distributed down the line. Reconnaissance was routinely carried out on horseback. The perimeter between the two forces was marked by numerous lookout points and separated by fields of landmines. Most of the fighters on the Gulistan front were volunteers, a number of them driven out from their homes by Azerbaijan special forces before the war began. The rest were conscripts who were just serving out their time and filling the uniforms. In total, all three outposts along this range of mountains could not have added up to more than 300 men and women. Although outnumbered and outgunned, their one advantage was their position. The Armenian side held the high ground, and the slopes leading up were a confusion of landmines. On June 25th, an Azeri offensive up these steep ridges had been repelled. Although Azeri command had moved heavy armor, including rocket launchers, into positions on the opposing mountains, the fighters of Garapag were dug into the sides of the hills making a direct rocket attack almost useless. The fighters of Shahumyan were known by the code name Yernig, the Armenian word for deer. Their commander at Gyogtapa, Shura, had his hands full trying to keep his team supplied and healthy. He faced a daunting task, and morale among the men was getting lower. <laughs> <laughs> Azerbaijan was at the time utilizing foreign trainers for their troops. There had been reports of Russian mercenaries attacking villages in the early days of the war. The latest round of mercenaries came from Afghanistan. Many in the former Soviet army were out of jobs when the USSR collapsed. These drifted to any war that was willing to pay. A mercenary pilot in the Azeri Air Force could make 5,000 US dollars a month along with bonuses and spending money. This was discovered as more and more mercenaries were shot down during bombing raids over Armenian territory. Russian generals, for their part, sold arms to both sides. So consequently, uh, there's a big game going on. And sometimes uh, people call this uh, the new great game. There used to be a great game in the 19th century between uh, Britain and, uh, and uh, Russia uh, in this region, in Azerbaijan and in Central Asia. Now some people call this the new great game. And in this great game, Armenia is a very important piece of the puzzle. The most treacherous job in Gyogtapa was sentry duty. The enemy occasionally rained mortar shells down on this location. Gündağı geçti, anır başı, bir görüşe. 
Razmiki, vor operația în arel, becur hanele. Es. Era cărți cohmit, sărti cohmit. De operația alvați, am învață. În coce, ochnel martans. Îmi închid nerin. În șoc cu carovana. De. Bălor de hanele cărvume, meri coghe haide nici hamar. Hai jocuri, hamar. Hamar, arsa, ha, ha, inde. Da, mare, e secretul, voi pisi ochnem. E vira vor în chezmerii, e vin și o jasă. Ceaș patraste lov, șorel de vana lov, mușcuri de sunane lov, vechi migirm, husca se lov, uista lov. Drahe pe mecte, zăi că zăi că zăi că zăi că zăi că zăi Ser martore? Rusa asta nu. Rusa asta nu. Ruse. Au ruse, ha. Și în ce înșcum ați zemer? A spai care mai ha. În ce cărvel ce uzum? Asma, ies, voci hai, voci adrbejam si el. Ies ce uzum cărvel. Hai loc marte, iar pe curișii hoge hamar ce cărvel. Ei asta ți hoge pe el. Ies ce mă caro parnă de lege gurții. De. Mec mer hoge hamar în cărvel. Pai parum, de în hot aras, în ce pe în ce carbon. De ies, mă dau să mă voș. Ele vii spun că hai să ne ciuze, n-a vor norit, dar să ne hing tva gani, hai ca gam gahta lini. Or norit este încă un arsa cu gahta vii, mai spun. În jumana, hai să stăm nel gahta vom, harsit, mușit, sare vamisit, erzrumit, vanit, mai îi mai arsa cu tot gahta vii. Dramar. In this part of the world, becoming a soldier was not only a political necessity, but a rite of passage. Even those who were too young would run away from home to join up. No one was denied the right to serve. Tu ești învărbit de lac? Aia. Iep. Iep mețanac. Iep it mețanac? Candidarii e? Nu ce fiind tare. Nu ce fiind tare? 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 Nu Clavem bajană, meli la vana. Asta mi-e papi e selem galis, asta mi-e tari că tolerana duelare el. Băiți, asta mi-e ce, tari că capciuni. Ta e împiti cărve. Ah, păru, stă în el, iram, hai atunci mici ori cărve era el, e că le-l mărtu, 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 e că Gilusta, Shamiani Rayul. Vor cărui, vrei jahani, vai să se la pap jahani, ești piti, mai tu nu te snam hetoga. Nu am ce să zic. E pares, lați mici. Unii ei că e ca. Zoveți, Shamiani Pașmana Cantil, că e un. In mid-May, a tense ceasefire was reached between the two sides. Supply runs to Gyoktapa and Ardatap began to slow down. There were weeds growing in the wild that were edible enough. <laughs> Ah, 
Հաշված խոտ եւ հաց։ Հասել արդեն գիտես մեկ ամսվա հաց է։ Երկու օր ալմնա փենեսել ինքը լա։ Ինչ կլինի։ Ինքոն Ամերիկա երտանքն է գարձեմ ասխոդեր ընկա։ Հա, է պիցան ինչ է հավա բսպրած է։ Ինչ պիցան։ Գործվեր է։ Գործվեր է, հա։ Բանը Դոմինոս պիցան մեզի հիմա հազարներով բանկրապսի պիտ երտա։ Ինքոն գնենք գնենք գաբսպրենք չեմ պեր երկոր։ Հա։ Յոթ սեր խոդով չայ։ Բո խոդով գերագուր։ Խոդով դուն։ Ամեն ինչ խոտ 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 մե After a week of weeds and hard bread a hunting party was arranged The hunt would take us deep into the forests surrounding Gyok Tapa It would be difficult to find any deer since the war had driven most animals farther into the wild This treacherous range was where a desperate convoy of Armenian refugees had made its run when Azeri forces blocked all other escape routes. Vehicles had rolled down the steep slopes. Many had only escaped with the clothes on their back. It was a scenario that had been all too familiar for both sides as territory had fallen into enemy hands. <laughs> Պարսիրական երնիկները կամ մորուկավոր գլան կամ գոդոշավոր երնիկները երնիկներ Շահոմյանցի երեխա Շահոմյանի սերու զմված ժպտում ա ոնց որ Շահոմյանի աբատան պայլում է զիզավում ա մեր բրա չէ Boris was one of the main fighters of the Yulistan Front and a native of Shahumyan. His family lived in Armenia in a refugee camp. <coughs> իմ խնդրանքով մեր կրվող տողոլան ցանունից ինչքան է որ դժվար լինի ինչքան որ չարչարու ենք որպես իմ հասնենք մեր նպատակի մեր նպատակն է շահամյանը լերցնել մա սկյանքում էտ միակ խնդրանքը հնարավոր ինչ որպես ոգնեն հասկանալի հասկանալի շնագալ չի մարինետուն որ է զմբազես շամեն որ մեկ կրում ներքշեն ներքինշեն կանի դարինանես 14 14 եւ դբոս գնաս հիմա չէ մաթը դոչ չես գնում իսկ բաջարը ինչ ու դոչ չես գնում ինչ բաջարը ծերքերի համար ծերքերի համար ես ծերքերի ոնց բաջարից ետ բաջարից ապրելուտին որ մեկ դարին 92 92 ապրելուտին ինչ պես բաջարից հենքո հենքո հոքո Բալ բալ ենք հաղում ձեր քրեսը ցեր մեջ փոքր ես ինձ 
The sun of the early morning would quickly give way to rain and cold. Due to damp conditions and low temperatures, life was restricted to the tents dug into the sides of mountains. <laughs> <laughs> the Azeri garrison in Gulistan included conscripts that had lived in various parts of the former Soviet Union even in Armenia. Some of them spoke Armenian fluently. Over 200,000 Azeris had lived in Armenia, working mostly in agriculture. Other large Azeri populations lived in Georgia, Iran, and Nakhichevan. Nakhichevan had been part of Stalin's arbitrary divisions of the Caucasus. Its ethnic Armenian population had been slowly driven out after Azerbaijan had been given control. The history of uh, Nakhichevan which um, borders Armenia, Turkey and Iran is an example of, uh, of what could happen. Uh, Nakhichevan used to have a population uh, in uh, 1920, the population of uh, Nakhichevan was approximately 40 percent Armenian. Today it's zero. And it's zero today because that 40 percent Armenian population was gradually, slowly um, squeezed out by the policies of the Soviet Azerbaijani government. Many believe that Gharapagh had been on its way to becoming another Nakhichevan. This was one of the reasons why the Armenians of Gharapagh had voted for independence from Azerbaijan. This was a liberation struggle. This was territory that historically and rightfully belonged to them. They were willing to die for the motherland. I think in part that's what made them so good militarily. They had a real reason to sacrifice their lives for their land. <laughs> The 
Army Nate was the only qualified field surgeon for Miles and was in charge of the Yernik Field Hospital at Ardatop. As a qualified surgeon, she could get a job anywhere in the former Soviet Union, but she had chosen to stay. <laughs> Transport, I think, in Vertalot. I think I'm in Chef Yerana Chivaski, in Chef Vertalot Chikaronaga, which makes the last of the Can you already pay Talot to Chega? The son of his passumic. Yet a stair will abort in a kinch for me. She had met her late husband during the war. Soon after they had been married, his helicopter had been shot down while bringing in emergency relief. The wreckage still lay where it had fallen, on the face of a mountain nearby. we want to establish normal relations with all of our neighbors with Turkey uh, without any political preconditions. But uh, after, uh, while well, Turkish government was very partial as far as the Karabakh conflict was concerned, mm -hmm. and even when it was a mediator in the CSC group, it uh, stated that uh, they unilaterally support the ethnic brothers in Azerbaijan. We understand that, but how can one act as a mediator if it supports one of the sides? We have only one condition that Armenian troops should go out from the country and then to open all these communications and probably to trade as usual, but in, in, in conditions where a uh, country under occupation, okay. you, can, you cannot consider that we will uh, trade as usual. For Azerbaijan, Karabakh is a, uh, an issue of national pride, and that's understandable. Uh, no country likes to uh, give up uh, a piece of territory, uh, but in this case, uh, Azerbaijan uh, lost the territory uh, in a war, in a war that Azerbaijan started. If you just sort of step back and think about the context, one can have a bit of empathy for why they felt that um, they, their territory was being uh, forcibly taken away from them. Azerbaijan does not need Nagorno-Karabakh. Azerbaijan is the biggest country in Transcaucasia. It is fabulously rich in oil. It is, uh, 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 it was a potentially wealthy country. They even have caviar in the Caspian Sea. So Azerbaijan simply does not need Karabakh uh, for its prosperity or for its uh, existence. By the time Armenia and Azerbaijan agreed on a ceasefire, both economies and populations had suffered. There were at least 35,000 war casualties. With their lands mostly restored, and with 10% of Azeri territory in addition, the Armenians of Karabakh were in a better position. The region of Shahumian, however, still remained in Azeri hands, and almost every family was mourning at least one war-related death. Armenia is living at the very edge. Karabakh is necessary, a symbiotic relationship between Armenia and Karabakh, especially a symbiotic economic relationship, is essential for Armenia's survival. Uh, without Karabakh, uh, Armenia is in danger of disappearing as an independent country. As Armenia maneuvers between powerful neighbors and is rocked by political upheaval, it remains locked in a blockade. Its economy is almost at the point of collapse. 
competing for Azerbaijani oil revenues, surrounding powers jockey for influence and control over the region. And the fate of the refugees of Shahumyan, like so many other things, hangs in the balance. For the time being, they can only hope of one day returning to the dark forests in the mountains. Inclusive, Abakain. Ask Anumas in Chemuzumasa. It's a case of hiding. 